That being so, I am come to ask you to stand for Magistrate of Lower Aventine on my slate. Thank you. Well? Could you become a Roman politician? The sun rises over a new day in Rome. The pink rays of dawn sweep the clay-topped homes and marble temples, met with the light clamour of traders setting up their wares and whispered prayers to Janus. But the heart of the city, where its true power lies, remains in shadow. The Senate is a hotbed of ambitious politicians and generals vying for power, preparing to do whatever it takes to climb the greasy pole, or cursus honorum, as the Romans preferred to call it. The year is 70 BCE, and though you might not know to look at it, the city, and indeed the Republic, has been rocked by the power vacuum left by the infamous dictator Lucius Cornelius Sulla. In a sunny July election, two men this year are appointed to the consulship, Pompey the Great and Marcus Licinius Crassus, the greatest general in Rome and the richest man in Rome. Set against this backdrop, I have just one question for you. Do you think you could make it as a politician in such a tempestuous climate? Well, if you don't know, listen on, and I'll guide you through the process to the first rung of the ladder, Quaestor, and maybe a little bit beyond that. A couple of quick disclaimers before we get stuck in, I have chosen this year very intentionally, and not only because of the cool consuls. So we're talking late Roman Republic, and while many of the steps on the Cursus Honorum continue to be the same into the Empire, and indeed were similar before Sulla, the process before and after 70 BCE wouldn't have been exactly the same. I just think that this year is a great time to look at it, there's no emperor calling all the shots and appointing people on a whim and there are more opportunities for those from non-senatorial backgrounds than before. The other disclaimer was that I wanted to add that I'm committed to improving the quality of my videos with better background footage, research, sound, and general animation. If you've been enjoying what I've put out so far, then obviously I want to say a huge thank you again for watching my work, and that if you'd like to support some more with a small donation, then my Patreon page is linked in the description. It grants you early access to videos, work in progress, glimpses at what's happening next on the channel, and other regularly classically themed posts. You can also suggest ideas, offer details, and speak to me directly. But with that out of the way, on to the challenge at hand. The first step in the quest for quaestorship, and the first rung on the senatorial ladder. So, the first requirement, no matter what your age, is to be a Roman citizen. If you're born to a Roman dad, you're off to a good start. If not, fear not. If you lived in a client state in Rome after 90 BCE, and we're in 70 BCE, so that's not a problem, thanks to the Lex Julia de Civitate Latinis Danda, you're automatically granted Kiwitas citizenship, and can skip to the next step. Otherwise, I'm afraid you're going to have to earn it through the process of military service, or ad lectio, whereby an influential Roman essentially sponsors your kiwitas. And even if you're the son of ex-slaves or freedmen, you're still in the running. As Tacitus proudly wrote in his Annals of the Imperial Age, Libertinarum filius magistratus mandandere non, ut pleres faluntur repente, sed priori populo facitatum est. The idea that the sons of freedmen should be trusted with public office is not, as many falsely believe, some recent invention, but was common practice in the earlier Republic. Right, so let's assume you've done the above and are now considered a Kiwis Romanus, a Roman citizen. But I hate to break it to you, you're not quite out of the woods yet. If you're a woman or a freed slave, I'm afraid you must drop out of the race now. You have what's known as non optimo iure, not the best rights. There's still plenty of room in politics for you, just not on the public stage. If you're a man, you get at least part of the benefits of having optimo iure, the best rights. 
This means you can vote, jus suffragi, but the other part of optimo jure is the important one, jus honorum, the right to hold office. Still with me? This is what we're going for. If you're born into an equestrian, or better still, a senatorial family, the next few years will be a walk in the park because you've already got the full optimo jure. If not, sadly, you don't get the right to hold office, and it's time to hit the campus martius and sign up to the army, because you, my friend, are not only plebeian, but lack the 400,000 sesterces requirement to skip the queue. In today's money, a net value of several million pounds, euros, or dollars. You choose. Right then, you pleb, if you want to get in early, you need to enroll in the Legion at age 17, because you've got a tough few years ahead. Head over to your local Kenturiai, your recruitment centre, and tell them you're raring to serve the SBQR. Remember, you're trying to become an equestrian, so you need that juicy jus honorum. And luckily, the net value isn't the only way to get there. You have the next five years as a lowly recruit in the infantry to prove your unmatchable military prowess and catch the eyes of a higher up to get you some big time favour. These five years as a Miles, a foot soldier, will earn you a stipendium or salary of five asses. That's a bronze coin, not a donkey or anything else, equivalent to around 120 denarii a year in 70 BCE. Based on the purchasing power of bread then versus now, we're looking at around 1500 US dollars, 1800 Great British pounds, or 1700 euros in today's money per year. Not a lot. And you'd better look after it because you'll need to use it well. Keep your armour and weapons in tip top shape, eat as well as you can, train hard, and make connections. If you hold your line in battle and hold your wits in conversation, then maybe, just maybe, you'll find yourself a senior patron who sees the potential in you. And okay, right, so they did, and ta da, you're now an equestrian at the age of 22, just in time to be eligible for the next requirement to become Quaestor. All that fighting in Armenia must have paid off. You've made friends, demonstrated leadership and strategy, and stand confidently before the tribal assembly, the Comitia Populi Tributa. And would you look at that, you made it up a rung, against all odds, to the incredibly prestigious position of Military Tribune, one of the Tribuni Militum a Populo. These were the tribunes who didn't come from the elite class, otherwise known as the Tribunus Angusticlaui, referring to the narrow stripe on their brand new togas. This is a pretty incredible feat, born of an ancient tradition detailed by Polybius. Epidan apodixosi tus upatus meta taftahiliarchus kathistasi, tetaraskaideca men ecton penteniasius ehonton edestratias, deca de alus suntutois ecton deca. After appointing the consuls, the assemblies appoint the military tribunes, 14 from those with 5 years military service, and 10 others who'd served 10 years. This number went up after Polybius' time, but the minimum requirement of five years' service remained. So, Tribune, you've boosted your way up from Miles to one rank above your Centurion, just below the prefects of your legion. Jealousy of your juniors aside, this is going to do wonders for your opportunities, more spoils of war, more chances to shine, more people to meet, and you're going to need all of them. One of the prerequisites of being eligible for the quaestorship is a year as military tribune, but remember, you're still the black sheep of the applicants, not from a rich background, with little to no political experience. You'd better use this year as tribune wisely. Take your duties seriously, showcase your military leadership and financial talents in the administration of your legion. You'll be before the tribal assembly again in no time, and will need to impress, impress, impress. Cicero didn't rise to the ranks by sitting on his arse all day. Jus honorum non est quivis dandum sed dignis, he said. The right to hold office should not be given to just anyone, but to those who are worthy. And would you look at that? The assembly is once again impressed with your industrious self and your stellar CV. This has granted you one of 26 minor magistracies the Magistratus Minores, otherwise known as the Viginti Sex Viri. 
between them, these 26 young chaps, you included, would manage things like minting coins, road maintenance, public order, overseeing private law, and the lucky ones got to head over to Capua and Kumai to deal with things over there. So you, being the trailblazer that you are, have now managed to hit all of the prerequisites for the Quaestorship before the age of 25. All that is, by your age. Thanks to the Lex Wilia Analis, you need to be 30 to run for this first Magistratus Maior, Major Magistracy, or Senatorial position. The competition is heating up for you, you're entering the big leagues. Cicero made his way on the back of incredible oratory, an unbeatable record in the courtroom, and very powerful allies, Pompey among them. In short, you need serious clout, so you have some choices regarding your career ahead of you for the next few years. Military, magisterial, legal, your call. Just keep earning money, respect, fame, friends, and political nous. Play the game, you're nearly there. And remember, to get your name out there, you really need to try, so something that can get you in the public eye across the Republic will suit you best. News in Rome was a bit static, there was a public place where senatus quam populi diurna acta confierent et publica rentur, the daily acts of the senate and people would be compiled and published. But these acta diurna, the daily acts, rarely left the city, you need to get some buzz going along the roads and in the provinces. But, for argument's sake, let's just say you're that amazing, and by 30 years old, you stand one final time before the tribal assembly, and wow, you're in their quaestor. And who cares if you had a bit of help? Pliny says of his friend, Ego quaesturum impetrawi, meius suffragio pervenit ad ius tribunatus petendi. I got in the quaestorship, my vote was the one that got him the right to stand for tribune. There's no shame in it, sir. That's the game of the day. It's only uphill from here. In a few years, you can get voted in for Tribune of the Plebs by the Concilium Plebis, the Plebeian Council, then another for the position of Aedile or Aedile, and you keep being Romulus incarnate as you have been, you can get the Comitia Centuriata, the Centuriate Assembly's vote, for the Praetorship at 39, and then Consul by 42. I hate to break it to you though, if you join the army at 17 in 70 BCE, you're getting the consulship in 45 BCE, and historically speaking, the second consulship that year was never filled. After years of civil war, and Julius Caesar really running the show, the big man is declared dictator for life just next year. But hey, enjoy the achievement, you earned it. <laughs>